Well, uh, you'll be excited to know that we have another volcano related question, um, this time about the South Island, you can see. So he'd like to know, is the Banks Peninsula volcano going to erupt again? Um, and there's a second half to his question, um, which is when that and when the Alpine fault goes, how strong will the earthquake be felt here? And will it how will it feel in comparison to the 2010-2011 quakes that they experienced? So Tom, your chance to talk about South Island volcanoes. And uh, Caroline, maybe you could talk about um, the shaking experience as well in Christchurch and how that might, um, how an Alpine fault earthquake might feel in comparison to that. Great, thanks Jenny. Um, so great question. So the Unbanks Peninsula, which is uh, uh, very, very close to Christchurch, uh, where or part of Christchurch city is, is uh, actually built on Banks Peninsula. Um, it's a series of three or, or four old volcanoes, which uh, geologists uh, believe are extinct. And what we mean by extinct is that they, they won't erupt again. So the, the volcanoes there are around about 11 to 6 million years old and very much stopped erupting uh, 6 million years ago. Um, What's interesting about them, and especially during the Canterbury earthquake sequence, is there's, there's these hot springs that uh, are present throughout the uh, Banks Peninsula. And so when we had the Canterbury earthquake sequence, it energized some of those springs and there was increased hot uh, water flow coming out of many of them, which uh, was you know, easy to assume that maybe there was some renewed volcanic activity. But what, what those hot springs are driven by is actually um, connections down to the um, uh, the geothermal gradient uh, underneath the um, uh, the Canterbury Plains, and it's um, fault-related fluids that are coming back up and um, being present at the surface, and not magmatic-related or, or anything to do with magma um, there. So unfortunately for people like me, Christchurch doesn't have active volcanoes. They're very much extinct as far as we can tell. Thanks, Tom. I'll jump to the next question, which I think was about ground shaking and also how it would be experienced in Christchurch specifically. Um, so from the Alpine Fort. So, so ground shaking is really controlled, you know, by how big is the earthquake, so the magnitude of the earthquake, but it's also controlled by how close you are to that earthquake, to the fault. And there's another factor, which is how soft the ground you're standing on is. So this is called the site amplification. And we have uh, Liam here is an expert. And um, so these are the three factors for the Alpine Fort. So back to Christchurch, Christchurch is about 100 kilometers away from the Alpine Fort, at least 100 kilometers away. And uh, so we would expect a moderate level of shaking if we were accounting for the presence of the Canterbury Plains. So unfortunately, the planes will add a lot of amplification to the ground shaking experience in Christchurch. And um, yeah, and so to just relate back to what the, the Canterbury earthquake sequence was, this would be, you know, in part of the region, this would be similar to what's been experienced in the Darfield earthquake. Um, now, I just forgot to say uh, one main difference would be because of the sheer size of the Alpine Fault. So we're talking 500 kilometer long fault. The rupture, so how, how long the rupture takes to unzip would be at least three minutes. So this is something that we haven't experienced in, in modern time in New Zealand yet. Uh, this would be an extremely long uh, rupturing of the fault. So this adds to, uh, to the duration of ground shaking. Now that said, uh, we don't really know what the next magnitude eight plus Alpine fault will look like. And so about six months ago, a team of uh, Victoria scientists and, and myself told you I loved instruments. We went out to the West Coast and we installed more than 50 of those very sensitive sensors, uh, densely spaced along the fault. And, and the idea was to listen, so not to volcanoes, sorry, um, but to listen to tiny earthquakes on the fault because the fault looks quiet, but it's actually, it's humming in the background. And we're really trying to listen to the Alpine fault to to tell us what is how it's behaving right now in order to predict how it's going to behave in the next earthquake. So there's a lot of uncertainty in what the ground shaking will be. And there's just, just more and more science coming through um, to better constrain what the next earthquake might be like. So um, yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm going to stop here. Otherwise I could talk for a long time again. <laughs>